And so here we just want to note the fact that, you know, this is a hard word to Benjamin from Jacob. And Jacob has deep affection for Benjamin, but he, he doesn't compromise. He doesn't change the message just because it's his son, Benjamin. He says they're going to be like a ravenous wolf. They, they will be, the idea is they'll be vicious. They'll be a warring tribe. And sometimes uh, it's for good. Sometimes it's not for good. This prophecy was fulfilled throughout Benjamin's history in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. We don't have time to go through every example from the tribe of Benjamin of how this was fulfilled. But I'll just mention a few that stand out from Benjamin. The first one is in Judges chapter 3. We have a man named Ehud. Ehud, he was the second judge of Israel. Ehud single-handedly by himself assassinated Eglon, the king of Moab, who oppressed Israel for 18 years. So for 18 years, the nation has lived under the oppression of this, this Moabite king. And Ehud was kind of like this Jason Bourne guy. And he goes to his palace uh, to, to deliver. He's got to deliver a payment tribute to the Moabites because Israel was forced to pay tribute to the Moabites. So he personally delivers it to the king. And it's a very cool story. Because Ehud was left handed. And so he hides a dagger on his right side. And so when he goes in to deliver the tribute to the king, he gets searched and he shows the left side where a right handed person would hide their dagger, hide their sword. So he just shows the left side. They don't bother to look at the right side because they just assume he's right handed, but he's left handed. So he gets in and he's he's in uh, by himself with the king, pulls out this dagger, stabs the king of Moab, and he stabs him with such force. The Bible tells us that the whole dagger went into his stomach, including the handle. And he couldn't pull it back out. Then he locks the door. And goes out through the balcony. And splits. And the guards. That at some point they go and knock on the door. The door is locked. And so they figure the king is going to the bathroom. Or maybe the king's taking a nap. And it gives Ehud time to escape. Dude is like a vicious wolf. Right? I mean. After that you have in Judges 17. You have uh, the tribe of Benjamin was at the center of this devastating civil war with the other tribes of Israel. We're told that 700 men of Benjamin killed 40,000 men from the other tribes in just two days of battle. Just devastating. Uh, Saul, the first king of Israel, was a Benjamite. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 47 says of Saul, after Saul had assumed rule over Israel, he fought against their enemies on every side. Moab, the Ammonites, Edom, the kings of Zobah and the Philistines, wherever Saul turned, he inflicted punishment on them. That's a Benjamite. Just inflicting punishment on everybody. Also, there's some good, good examples to Esther. Esther was from the tribe of Benjamin and Esther, with, her, with the help of her uncle Mordecai, bravely saved the Jewish people from annihilation. The Jewish festival of Purim celebrates the zeal of Esther and Mordecai. Esther is currently playing at Sight and Sound Theater in Lancaster, by the way. But the most famous Benjamite of all was Saul of Tarsus. Also known as the Apostle Paul. And I want you to listen to what it says in the New Testament about Saul of Tarsus and see if this doesn't sound like a ravenous wolf to you. Acts chapter eight, verse three. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. In Acts chapter nine, verses one and two. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. And he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. He was breathing out murderous threats. Sounds like a wild animal to me. Acts chapter 22, verse 4, Paul says of himself, 
I persecuted the followers of this way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. In Acts chapter 26, when Paul gave his defense before King Agrippa in Caesarea by the sea, he said, I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem on the authority of the chief priests. I put many of the Lord's people in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished. And I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign cities. The Apostle Paul was a ravenous wolf who hunted down and tore in pieces the believers in Jesus Christ. And all of that changed for Saul of Tarsus when he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. And Saul was radically transformed by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will change you. He will change your life. He can forgive all of your sins, everything that you've ever done wrong, and he can transform you and make you a new creation where the old things pass away and he makes everything new. That's what he did in Paul's life. But with Paul, with Paul, his zeal for God remained. His zeal for God remained. Uh, God didn't alter Paul's temperament. He didn't make Paul soft. That zeal was still there. And what God did is God took Paul's zeal and just rechanneled it in a God honoring way. And so all of that zeal and passion that was in Paul, God used it and, and Paul became zealous for Jesus Christ. And became the greatest missionary the church has ever known. God can take what is already in you, what you're already passionate about, and He can use it for His glory and for His purposes. And so finally, in closing, Jacob wraps this up in verse 28. He says, all these, uh, this, this footnote here for us, all these are the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the first time we have the phrase, the 12 tribes of Israel in the Bible. And this is what their father spoke to them. And he blessed them. And he blessed each one according to his own blessing.